Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mocking Man at YouTube with another modeling video. Series 2, a part of my 3D printer series. Now originally I wanted to do a video where I'm cleaning up something, painting it and presenting it, but I haven't gotten far with that. And instead I thought I'll uh, talk about um, my successes and failures with uh, printing a heap of uh, stuff found on Thingiverse as well as trying to draft things with uh, open source free download software and other uh, successes and failures and faults that I've uh, come across so just uh, things I'm exploring printing now from setting up uh, loading an STL file and printing uh, very easy uh, Thingiverse website is absolutely amazing, a lot of stuff on there, but there's a lot of stuff I'd love to have that's uh, not on there, and I'm sure as uh, interests uh, grow and uh, people learn how to draft and upload stuff, it can only get uh, better, but there is just a lot of, um, how can I uh, put it, novelty items on there just for general 3D printer enthusiasts and not so much for scale uh, modelers but um, hey the more of us that get involved uh, that will uh, surely change and there's also a Gunpla community with some action bases, um, small components as well as uh, very basic Gundams that can glue together with uh, no articulation and uh, very uh, shallow detail I'm sure far from a threat to uh, Bandai and um, hardly uh, doing any damage whatsoever. Anyway, I'll have a look at all the stuff here, and then we'll have a little uh, discussion about drafting. Uh, everything here has been printed since purchased, uh, obviously. Had it for a little more than a week, and I just wanted to push it to its uh, many different extremes. Uh, operating it has operated day and night. I've turned it off, turned it on, and initialized it a few times, let it several hours to rest, several hours to uh, play, making sure it wasn't on uh, permanent leaks. I don't know what sort of damage that would entail. Uh, probably halfway through my ABS uh, reel, and uh, a lot of the things here, uh, a couple of things I'm going to keep, a couple of things for modelling, and probably the rest of it's going to be uh, gifts to my other modelling friends around the place. So, uh, very large geometric shapes are done absolutely flawlessly. I've got these uh, transformer symbols. Next thing, I've just uh, did this one today, it's very quick. Vents. And these are just to uh, glue on your kits. These were actually in 160 scale if you want to convert your um, perfect grades. I scaled them uh, by half and these would uh, work perfectly for um, 1 to 144. And they could probably be scaled slightly smaller to be absolutely accurate. Now I was talking about scaffold supports and rafting and whatnot. I printed off two Warhammer 40,000 las guns for a tank now i had 3d file to create the entire tank i think i'll try to make one in 70 second ish scale for fun i'm sure uh they're going to be spitting at the teeth so i'm not going to sell it or do anything dodgy but uh very basic came out nice as a piece that i cut off by detail piece i cut off by accident but the detail is absolutely lovely but I printed it with absolute most extreme uh, raftering and scaffolding. So we've got all this crap around it, which can be easily teared off with your finger or a knife. And a little uh, sanding, you'll get that. So if you haven't done anything before and you print something off and you get something like that, don't be disappointed. But because to get an absolutely straight, detailed and nice looking, uh, all of that will help produce a very nicely detailed piece a little putty, a little sanding uh, this will be more than good enough to print on a model now I made this little house I'm obviously going to make some buildings for dioramas and in the door we've got this kink that was uh, 
a fault of the actual 3D model, not the printer. But uh, I don't know if um, it needs calibrating or that the walls of this item is very thin. It warped ever so slightly. This isn't too much of a bad thing. It still looks fairly good. A little putty, probably slicing it up and re-gluing it. This would be more than good enough. But if it gets any worse than that, then repair will obviously be a little harder. But that's not too bad for uh, warpage. Let's get consistency going. Printed off 10 Gatling guns, one after the other, over many, many days. Each Gatling gun takes about oh, two and a bit hours to do. 10 grams of uh, plastic. It's absolutely well proportioned, well detailed. I've been trying to scale them down to make a more Gundam friendly one and um, the printing software doesn't like that. So I'm going to try to just scale it down by 10-20% and see how that goes or not. But I've been doing some fairly outrageous uh, scaling. What I'm printing off right now is the same Gatling gun but it's uh, double in size. Absolutely amazing. I might have talked about this in my previous video, a helmet. Lots of uh, detail and I'm going to try to be cleaning them up and painting them after I paint my existing helmet. You can see that uh, I've got all the support there and that tears off and that's to make sure it stands without falling on the printer even for a fairly heavy object. We've got the full metal alchemist helmet. Now just an update I've tried a lot of the techniques advertised online, uh, cements and solvents brushed on and dipped to see if it smooths out. It does not work very well, still got those uh, rigid lines all the way across, sanded the hell out of it, uh, still could be seen through the primer. Uh, the only thing that really helped, even using microfilling primer, was putty. I've been using Squadron uh, putty, sanded it up. I just only puttied the areas that I thought would be worse affected. Came out very nice, but there was more dents and lines and all sorts of stuff. So after using Mr. Hobby Surface of 500, I've uh, covered it in putty for a second round of sanding. And normally, just a rough sanding, a rough putty go, and rough uh, primer, you'd get something that's good enough for painting. The plan I have for this guy being a medieval-esque helmet, I would like to give him the full Alclad treatment and to do Alclad uh, premium metallic paint painting, you have to have a surface absolute schmick and uh, perfectly flat with no faults. So, and also, I want to show the uh, full capability of 3D printing and modeling. So this is the goal of this guy. And he's going to take a lot of work, but other ones, uh, 3D models I make where if it's going to be weathered or painted in certain ways, not much of a cleanup will happen. For something that needs to be absolute perfect metallic or high gloss, this is probably the sort of work that needs to go in there. And for something, this, this is quite substantial in detail and size, I've probably invested about uh, four to five hours in cleaning him up. But I'm sure something... Uh, like this would be so much quicker. You could almost even use a Dremel or whatnot. This guy is on its on the go. I've documented the pro every process of uh, cleaning up and the experiments and the failures and the little mistakes have gone through and the removal of um, all the scaffolds and supports and uh, rafting. And he's going to have his own individual video. So look forward to that in a few weeks time as well as uh, cleaning this guy will get the same treatment and then I'll start drafting things up for an actual attachment to a mobile so now these two were very big prints this is a ancient Chinese musical instrument known as a Chinese ocarina I forget the actual Chinese term uh, when I looked at YouTube videos how to play this so I couldn't play it. Had a different style of uh, 
mouth piece and I probably didn't clean the hole well enough so I couldn't make the sounds that I saw in the videos but uh, I made the walls a little thicker four layers and it is extremely strong with two hands I can't uh, crush it and it is very very durable uh, being an absolute perfect sphere because uh, the Alphonse helmet round pieces were a bit polygonish and had all these uh, lines and whatnot around it I was a bit worried if that was a 3D printer thing the printing of this it does large and smallest perfect spheres perfectly which is good I'll be liking to add a lot of randish things to my models and a bust of the human face or the human form uh, I, I, I always want to have a bust laying around and this is the coolest one I could find on Thingiverse and the details in the face it's recognizable to who the character is and the clothing details nice and whatnot is a very solid model with um, as dense uh, filling as humanly possible to a solid piece very very tough very very heavy for a plastic piece and in timing wise he took 10 hours to uh, print out but uh, for figurative stuff and remind you this is a uh, an older 3d printer uh, stuff that's a lot quicker finer and nicer this is what you can get from humanoid sculpting and when we're thinking of wanting to do character figures and maybe animated figures uh, the future is very bright for painting of those sort of things and uh, the purchase of them uh, if I was to clean them up that should not be too much of a problem now of course I've had my absolute epic failures now this is a very silly model that I downloaded but it was of a fan blade sort of like a propeller off an aircraft it was very very thin and the model was floating in thin air like so with uh, the bottom of one of the blades as the support and I printed it with minimal support as possible and it struggled it tried to do one fan blade but it started moving and uh, stringy material went everywhere and then after a while of uh, just producing a heap of uh, string of plastic everywhere it just started printing in midair and absolutely failed an example of the wrong model in the wrong position on the printing bed using the wrong settings I should have uh, if I wasn't able to put it on the actual bed flat I should have put in as many supports as humanly possible and make it a little bigger a little thicker now this is a gun it's meant to be a Gatling gun at the end of uh, the pistol which I thought was very cool I wanted to cut the handle off and maybe use it for something and again with absolute minimal uh, support there was a lot of detail a lot of vents holes tiny pipes and when I was trying to remove it from the support and whatnot uh, the really fine detail was as thin as the support ripped tore apart and just got crushed in between my fingers pretty much more or less the, the handles cool I'll probably keep it and do something with the handle cut it off and clean it up I don't think it's a total write-off but uh, the part that I was most interested in yeah not so good uh, the support is kind of cool and you see it's just such a light plastic it ever so light pressure and it will crush and unfortunately the detail here was the same and um, not too sure I think it's the drafting of the actual model that needs to be addressed now with uh, printing I had come across a problem while printing a few of these Gatling guns and changing the board this thing you're moving around the print bed and whatnot probably pushing it ever so slightly out of um, alignment I tried to print one of the big uh, transformer pieces I believe uh, the Decepticon symbol and it uh, 
the bed rose, ready for printing, and it hit the end of the nozzle and started scratching into this. So, after not sure if it was printing or not, I stopped the print and found that uh, plastic could not extrude out of the nozzle. Now, I read of this in the instructions. If the uh, bed does uh, smash into uh, the nozzle, uh, the actual reel needs to be re-extruded and reattached to the actual nozzle head. So, um, if you don't do that, it's going to continuously forever print uh, in midair. I have not done uh, a bed level or a calibration yet of uh, the X, Y, or Z axis, but I find in between every print, if you turn off the printer, turn it back on and initialize it, re uh, connect it with the computer and the software it sort of does its own quick calibration to see that the stepper motor is on level with the uh, computer and that will probably save a lot of heartache so that's um, something that I'm going to do every time I print unless you get something a little more modern and it actually does that uh, automatically you can probably stretch out the time a lot further to when you need to calibrate it now drafting software I only know how to use AutoCAD and I'm trying to get a working copy of uh, some means working on my home computer so I can draft things, print them out in STL files. I'm aware 2014 and beyond can do that. Looking at retrospective software that I'm able to get, uh, that works absolutely fine. Very complex, difficult to learn, would not recommend that to a first time. So I wanted to play with some software and uh, saw the two most recommended viable options 3D Blender and Google SketchUp heard Google SketchUp is quite easy two old for toys mentioned are using it on Facebook so I downloaded it, found it to be very simplistic didn't have a lot of the tools that I'm used to in uh, my drafting software though probably good for a beginner to start learning uh, 3D Blender, it's free, easy to download absolute uh, open source very complex. This uh, software does a lot of things from animation, uh, animation live, video game rendering, just a thousand things it's able to do. So it's got a billion tools and it seems extremely complex but it also seems to be powerful enough to do all the advanced stuff including what I would like to do in AutoCAD. Uh, being very advanced, I wanted to do stuff immediately and just did not understand it whatsoever. If you want to do a lot of fancy mechanical or organic uh, work, maybe it's worth hunting down tutorials and slowly learning uh, Blender. I noticed there's quite a few uh, videos and software educational tutorials on YouTube, probably a good start, but that's something to explore. Um, I was not able to grasp it immediately and would just stick to what I know. I won't be talking about software too much. Google SketchUp if you want to do very basic things, um, I suppose, but uh, I couldn't figure out how to do much from it. I've seen people do some really cool things in uh, Google SketchUp and I can understand you can get all these um, open source free tools to do more things. Didn't want to spend too much time playing with that, but I seen a guy draw like a whole detailed uh, Gundam, so that's another uh, viable option. Both probably worth uh, looking into, it's probably looking worth uh, any other three software uh, that could uh, assist in that, in uh, 3D modeling. Uh, the world's out there and it's free. Uh, just do some research. Uh, there's a few search engines that will uh, pump out what's the 10 best softwares. Have a look, have a read, have a trial of them, whatever's easiest to learn or easiest to use. Obviously, uh, stick to it. But the most important thing to look into uh, the software is if it can save to STL files. And then from there, we can experiment making things and printing them out. Hopefully, in a few weeks, I'll start doing that. And as always, passing on notes that I just happen to come across to in these videos. And still working on cleaning up a model, the Alphonse helmet, to be worthy of painting and entering in a model competition. And later on, printing in PLA and gluing those to models. Anyway, for some reason, I kept using this camera all week and I've driven it to five minutes before it absolutely uh, cucks it. 
Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, due to my absence, I'll try to put out a couple of more videos in normal a week. I've uh, started uh, a video for the enhancing your airbrush uh, skills. No, it wasn't that. Honing your airbrush skills. I've just finished filming a mo uh, video for that, and we'll be editing that up. This as well, including a couple of small tutorials, as well as models. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Cheers.